All right, it's a uh, late Friday afternoon. Jude's coming over. We're gonna babysit him tonight, and uh, things just happen. I'm doing another book tube, boom, like that. Why, Christine? You have inspired me. Hey. Yeah, she. I promise her not to go into rant. Something happened today. So, really quickly, uh, a few months ago, uh, college I've been uh, teaching part time at for 35 years. Cut a whole bunch of environmental programs. Um, I, I got hours cut, I, my life changed, whatever, and I went to get my stuff because basically, I, you know, I left the college, I didn't get fired, um, and security came to take me to the office to get my stuff, and I'm, really, really, uh, and I just lost it, I actually, my dad told, always told me never burn your bridge, but I did that day, I told him what I thought, and I walked out, leaving all my stuff, well that means a whole bunch of books, that I used to teach my students for over, over those 35 years. Now, I did teach Species ID, we're not getting into that. I also taught um, environmental issues for a good old couple of decades. And um, uh, I also taught um, nature li literature. Did you know that, Christine? I taught nature literature. No, I didn't I know did. that. I did, I did, I did. So a lot of those books were left there. Christine said, oh, what was you? I'm going to go to a uh, used bookstore today. I'll see what I can find. Uh, because I, I'm not going back for those books. She found this. San Call Me Almanac, Otto Leopold. He was the Moses of the New Conservation Movement. He didn't live to see the promised land. Amazing book. Really cool story though. Again, 35 years ago, my first week I walked in to my lecture with that. And the Fish and Wildlife prof at the time, that very close-minded individual, um, he looked at me and said, looked at the book, and he goes, I knew you were gay. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> what are you talking about? I went, I'm not gay, but I'm okay if you are gay. And I go, what is your problem? This is 35 years ago. He goes, only gay people would actually get students to read that book. Then, a few years later, sorry, I'm going on a rant. You told me I wasn't going no, to go on a rant, but... I, I, I'm just shaking my head because that is pathetic. Yeah, it was, it, it was. And I went, what is your problem? And so what happened was, um, I used the book, uh, about 10 years later, he actually got removed for something nasty he did to a woman, actually. Um, I shouldn't be telling you stories, but that, that is what happened. And now, uh, in fact, actually about 12 years later until now, this is required reading for common semester students. They cannot graduate from common semester unless they read this book. Isn't that interesting? Other books that I use and I still do, um, still read now and then. These are kind of my Bibles. I actually read them uh, at night just to relax and chill and think about things, especially right now, to be quite honest. John A. Livingston, Fallacy uh, of Wildlife Conservation. A must read, especially if you're going through for natural sciences and things like that, environmental issues and things like that. This book, it's like, it'll blow your mind. He was way ahead of the time. He was talking like 20, more than 20 years ago, actually, more than 30 years ago. When did he write this book? A long time ago. Um, oh my, yep, 1981. Uh, he wrote this, and right now what's going on in conservation is happening, and he first saw the future. Amazing book. It'll, it'll take you a while to read this, and you'll reread it, reread it, like, what the heck are we talking about? But, excellent book. Philosophy Gone Wild. This is amazing. Okay, this is all about, this is a Holmes Rolston III, I don't know anything about him except this book I used every single day I walked into that school. It's all essays about environmental ethics and where they come from, where they're going. I don't know what it's, I, I gotta say, you gotta read this book and read, read it, reread it, reread it. This one, very controversial, The Rights of Nature, Nature, Roderick Fraser Nash, well-known author back in the day. And yeah, very, um, Darwinism, Dare to Think, right? Exactly. Another one, Dare to Think, that got people going. Again, you know, at that time, the fish and wildlife people say, you can't talk about this, Kevin. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. You know, I, I'm okay if you uh, are a trapper. I'm okay if you're not a trapper. You're okay to discuss things back and forth. Um, sometimes I think, you know, trapping is fine. When I lived up north, uh, it, it was all doable and made all sense. But to kill for fashion and vanity, I don't know. So I would introduce this, Second Nature, the Animal Rights Controversy. Um, Alan 
Horkvershusha, I can't pronounce it. <laughs> Harris, I, this is, very, that's so bad, I can't, I, CBC uh, documentary on this, and t looks at all sides of the trapping industry. Really old book, but still readable today. Another one, Tom Brown Jr., The Vision. Okay, this is The Tracker, the guy that wrote the book, The Tracker. And uh, you talk about bushcrafting today, this, is, this, is, this was the guy about the idea of tracking and wildlife uh, observation. So I would get the students to read that book. Another one, Wild Goose Jack. It's Jack Miner's autobiography. Basically, he was the one that actually um, <laughs> saved the goose from extinction. The Canada goose. <laughs> I think he did a good job because there's lots of them around now. But he had a sanctuary down in southern Ontario. And this is all about him and wildlife observations. His uh, wildlife observations were, were critical me, with me growing up. I would read about you know moose um, gathering in the wintertime to when skunks wake up and all that stuff. It's not just about geese. I learned so much from this book. Just rereading all this all the time, Words from the Wild, just short essays by the Sierra Club. Um, really old book, but great. Barry Lopez is in there. That's the one book, talk about Barry Lopez. I, I swear that's the book that's on my desk right now at the college. Uh, River Notes. Unbelievable book. Can't find it. Got me upset. This is why I'm doing it right now. Yes. I got you covered, Kevin. Okay, are you? I've got, I'm on it. Really? Seriously? I'm, I'm on it. Did I've you find you it? Covered. Really? Okay, um, Christine goes to a lot of used bookstores and places like that to get her books, and she's on the hunt for Barry Lopez, River Notes, fantastic book. Another one, because I taught forestry and I was a forest technician, graduated from Sioux College, very proud of that, and Heritage Lost, The Crisis of Canada's uh, Forest, Donald McKay, uh, really good read now, to be quite honest, because again, he was foreseeing the future of what's going on today. I think this is incredible. This is from uh, the Minister of Natural Resources. It's about wolf populations in Algonquin back like three decades ago, and boy, have things changed now. Um, just to reread this book about what they thought about wolves and what they actually did find about wolves. The wolves in Algonquin Park are red wolves, they're not timber wolves. People deny that for years. The reason why is that if there were a red wolf, then they were protected by law because they're endangered species. People didn't want that, not everybody, but some people didn't want that. They wanted to actually still hunt and trap the wolves, but they can't because the red wolves, then it got really messed up because the red wolves started actually um, mating with coyotes and then creating a new species and of course you can kill a coyote le legally uh, for trapping and hunting but you can't kill the red wolf and everything went crazy but it started with studies like that amazing um, endangered spaces spaces this is a book put together about just a bunch of essays put together um, uh, about we're ru ruining uh, or we're losing all our wild spaces it basically talks about how we're parks are are sorry, islands of green amongst the ocean of development and how that really can't exist. Diversity cannot keep existing if you keep doing it that way. It also talks about a true wilderness park is a place where we don't go. We're not allowed to go. That's what they believed anyway. Which is, again, this book, Islands of Hope, the same idea. A whole bunch of essays put together long ago about that idea, about what are parks and terror parks? What are they about? And what should they be about? Okay, I'm not going on much of a rant, am I? I'm doing really good. You're doing really great. Yes. You're doing awesome. And you can tell that I actually taught all this because I'm, there's no script at all. The only thing I wrote down is to make sure I mention Barry Lopez River Notes because I can't find it. This book here is a relatively new book. Well, I didn't say new book, but it's my newest book for that. This I actually read on a continual basis. It's uh, Monty Hummel, uh, just north of here, near Frontenac. He has a place. Um, and he talks about all the seasons, all the species during the seasons in, in his cabin on the lake. Man, I, I just read this book all the time. It just chills, chills me out. There we go. You said I couldn't do that in time. I, I, I said you have, you have a time constraint. I do, because we're, we're babysitting. But you obviously knew your stuff in this one, because you just like... <laughs> Yes! You just like spit out! Spit that right out! Right. Yeah. So, um, if any of my colleagues are still at the college, I don't think they are anymore. I think everybody left when everything happened there. All, all, uh, all the good ones anyway. I shouldn't say that, but that's probably true. Uh, but if you are still there and hanging on, uh, could you go to my office and get my old books, please? And the photos of my child that I left there. So, that would be nice if I got the photos from my child growing up. I would like to have those. Are you trying to make me cry? It's very upsetting. <laughs> it's very upsetting. Anyway.
thanks for coming out and yeah another booktube books that I read and shared to, with my students over the years to broaden the horizons of environmental ethics and wilderness protection. Done!